Drums here in GarageBand are awesome. They're fun to play and they're really great for your tracks, but sometimes it can be really hard to get them to line up on the grid. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips that are going to help you with your drums here in GarageBand. Let's go. Hi, my name is Pete and welcome to Studio Live today where my goal is to help you create, record and release your best music. And if you've been using drums here in GarageBand, you may have noticed something a bit strange and that is that sometimes you'll play your drums in and then when you play back, they won't sound the way you played them. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips that is going to help you fix that problem and hang around to the end because I've got a couple of bonus tips that I'm going to throw at you as well that will really help your drum sound. Let's jump in now. So to demonstrate this one, I'm going to record in a drum beat and then I'll show you some of the options that we can select that are going to make it sound really good. So let's hit record and record in some drums. All right, we've recorded in four bars there of our drums. We'll go back to our track view here, and here we are. There are our drums recorded. Now, let's play these back and take a listen to how they sound. Now, I don't know about you, but that didn't sound anything like what I played. Now, what is the problem here? Well, it's the automatic quantization that GarageBand puts on your track. Now, quantization is just a fancy word for lining it up on the grid. The good news is we can turn that off and we can even use a different type of quantization to make things a little better. So let's tap on the mixer icon here in the top left. If you're on a smaller device, it may be on the top right. And then we're going to tap track settings and quantization. And what you'll see here is that we have a straight 1 16th note quantization automatically enabled here on our drums. That's because GarageBand doesn't trust you and it wants to help you line up your drums. Now, this can be a good thing if you're playing a straightforward drum beat with no swing rhythm. But if you as soon as you try to swing it or add some triplets or add anything fancy, it's going to sound terrible. So we've got a couple of options here. We can take the quantization off. Let's tap on none. Now, if we play back, take a listen. Our nice swing rhythm is back, but you'll also notice that we have triplet and swing quantization. So let's tap on swing. Now, if we knew that we were swinging this on the eighth note or the 16th note, we can actually tap on these. So let's go one eighth heavy swing and hit play. So that's sounding pretty good. If we wanted to make it a bit lighter and to not sort of line it up on the eighth note, but the 16th note, let's try this one and hit play. So again, you can hear there that it's not working as well. So we definitely needed the heavy swing and probably around the eighth note. So that's a quick and easy way to fix that problem. You can either turn it off if you trust your own playing and you want it to be exactly as you played it, or you can use some of our other quantization options to get yourself a better performance. But let's jump in and actually see what's happening here under the hood and why this is such a great feature and why you should be playing around with quantization. So let's quickly jump into the edit mode here. We're going to tap on our drums here, tap again, and tap edit. And this will bring us into the MIDI note editor. If we zoom in by spreading our fingers, you can see here that all of these notes are the drum notes that we hit. Now, they're kind of all over the place, yeah, because we did a swing rhythm and, you know, my, my timing's not perfect. So you can see here that this one here is like just after the beat here. If we come down to, say, beat number three here, these ones here are just before. So I am played those just before. They're... they're there's the crash and the kick drum. So I can manually adjust these by just dragging them across like that, and then they'll be right on the beat. So that's one way to actually adjust your drums is to come in here and manually adjust them. But let's just see what quantization actually does. So if we tap on the mixer again, go to track settings, go to quantization, let's go that straight 16th note that it put on by default, and now let's go back in and see what it's done to our drums. So we'll go into the edit mode here. Here's our edit window. And now remember those beats? Yep, here's that number three beat. Now it's right on the beat. And if we go back to the start here, yeah, all of our notes here are right on the beat. So that's why you get that really robotic sound like this.
which may be what you're looking for if you were trying to play a straightforward rock beat. Hey, straight quantization is going to be your friend. Let's hit done. Let's go back to our quantization and we're going to take a look at the swing quantization and see what this actually does. So that one eighth heavy swing, again, we'll tap here, we'll tap edit, we'll come back into our notes here. So now, yes, it's still lining things up and you'll notice it only lines up the start of the note. So it won't line up the back of the note. It'll let that go out as far as it needs to, but it lines up the front. But some of these, like this kick drum hit, are not right on the grid. And that's because we've added in that swing feel to our beat. And again, if we play this back, Those snares are on the nice beat that we wanted them there. So they're not right on the beat. They're that swing rhythm that we wanted. So that's what's happening here behind the scenes. GarageBand is actually moving your notes around. And when you add quantization, it'll move them. As soon as you take it off, it'll take it away. So it's not making any permanent changes. And that's the important thing to keep in mind here is that you can come back, you can change your quantization, you can turn it off at any time. And it's seriously the number one thing that a lot of folks struggle with with drums is they'll play them in, they won't sound like they played them and then they'll get frustrated. All you need to do is come into quantization, turn it off and your drums will sound exactly as you played them. All right, before we finish up, it's bonus tip time. So here's two things that you may or may not know about drums that are going to help you get a better drum performance. So the first is velocity sensitivity. So what we need to do is first tap on our drum to go back into our actual drum view. So... We can play our drums and then we need to tap on the mixer icon and go to our track settings. Now, as well as quantization and the recording option, we have this one in the middle now, the velocity sensitivity. So let's tap on that one. At the moment, it's on low. If you find this on medium and high, what it means is that the harder you hit, the drum, the harder or the louder the velocity, the louder the sound. If we turn this completely off, then it doesn't matter how hard or soft we hit that, it's gonna be the same velocity. Now, what I tend to do is I record on either low or off because if you have it on high and you try to play, you can find that you're hitting some beats really hard and some really soft. It can be hard to get that right on the touch screen. I would rather have it off or on low and then go back and edit it afterwards. So play around with that because a lot of drums that I hear, a lot of frustration I hear from folks is that they say, I, I get this really uneven drum beat when I'm trying to play the drums in myself. And the first thing I say is check your velocity sensitivity and it makes a world of difference even just having it down on low or even off if you're creating a beat. And bonus tip number two is the merge recording option. So if we tap on the recording drop down here, you can see we've got merge recordings on. If that's off, you can turn it back on like that. And with merge recordings on, we'll just get our mixer icon out of the way. We can actually record over the top of that original drum beat and layer up different drum sounds. Let's show you what I mean. We'll hit record and I'll add some symbols to this. So let's go to our track view now and look at what has happened. Instead of overwriting our original drums, it's actually added to them. So this is a way we can layer up different drum sounds on the one track. If we play back now, We've got that symbol added to our drums. And yes, you could hit the plus button here. You could add in a new drum track and layer them up that way if you wanted more control. But this is a great way to layer up if you want to do your kick, then your snare, then your toms, then your cymbals. You can do everything separately, get them all in time, and then they'll merge together on the one track. So there you go. I hope you found these drum tips useful and they're going to help you create your best drum sounds here in GarageBand. If you've got any comments, questions or suggestions, you can leave those down below. You can subscribe by clicking or tapping in the top right corner. There's two more drum videos just down below that you can check out and I'll see you on the next video.